Hi again. Today we're going to be working on lab 11, which is magnetic field mapping. Uh, this is more of a qualitative lab than a quantitative lab. Um, so there's a lot of images. Um, this would be so much better for you guys to see yourself instead of just seeing images of what I've done, but we'll do our best with what we've got uh, with our online classes. So the goal of the lab this week is to understand the magnetic field by using small compasses to visualize and trace the magnetic field lines for three different things. So we're gonna look at a dipole, which is a north and a south end of a magnet. We're gonna look at a repulsive dipole, which would be two south ends or two north ends of, of our magnet. And we're gonna look at a quadrupole field. So first, before we even start, we should talk about magnets. Um, magnets, are the bar magnets we're gonna use, are labeled with a north and south end. And actually the basic unit of magnetic charge is a dipole, a pair of equal strength and opposite polarity magnetic poles. So different than the electric field, where we could just draw an electric field around, say, a positive charge or a negative charge, we're always gonna have these two poles together. Now you may already know that if you break a magnet in half, you still have two poles. So you can't separate that north and south pole of your bar magnet. If you were to break it in half, you would just have two shorter magnets still with north and south poles. And you may have experience with accidentally doing this where you've broken a magnet and see that it can still stick back together. That's because that north and south pole are attractive to each other. Um, if you broke those two pieces in half, again, you just have even smaller magnets still with a north and a south pole. So the basic unit, the smallest unit that we can have of uh, the equivalent to electric charge in a magnetic field is this dipole. It's two poles. You can never, we don't have any evidence that there are lone magnetic monopoles. And if we did, we'd have to rewrite some of our electromagnetic equations to account for that. Okay, so our magnetic field lines are a way to help us visualize the vector magnetic field in the same way that drawing an electric field line was a way for us to visualize the electric field. Uh, we can use the small magnet that's within a compass to visualize these magnetic field lines, or we can use iron filings, which are ferromagnetic materials. So you'll see on the image to the right, there's a bunch of small compasses, and you can see those compass needles are aligning themselves in that arc that shows us the magnetic field lines from the north to the south end of this bar magnet. Uh, for bar magnets, uh, the standard kind of coloration is that north is red and south is blue. You can also see that they've sprinkled some magnetic filings, um, not magnetic filings, iron filings, on that piece of paper or that desktop where that magnet is. And you can see they've uh, arranged themselves in kind of this arc pattern from one pole to the other uh, to help us visualize those magnetic field lines. Now we're seeing a 2D image, but of course, just like the electric field, this would be in three-dimensional space. So our magnetic field lines are gonna have a directionality. Outside the magnet, we're gonna draw magnetic field lines as emanating from the North Pole and ending at the South Pole of our magnet. Now, those magnetic field lines actually continue within the magnet. Um, so within the magnet, they would go from the south to the north, and we would have a complete loop. So magnetic field lines form loops, not just lines. Um, and part of that is because we always have our magnets as dipoles with a north and a south end. So we're always going to have that kind of completed loop. Now, the magnetic field strength is directly proportional to the density of magnetic field lines. In other words, the number of field lines passing through a unit volume of space is going to give us information on the strength of the magnetic field. Now, in the image to the right, you can see that the field lines are more densely packed near the poles than they are kind of off to the side of this bar magnet. That is letting us know that the magnetic field strength, the field is stronger near those poles than it is further away from those poles. Now, similarly, we drew electric field lines in the same way that the density of lines told us something about the strength of the field. 
the magnetic field vector is tangent to the field line at any point. This is also similar to what we saw with our electric field. So a magnetic field we denote usually with the letter B and because it is a vector, we'll give it the little vector arrow at the top. And in this image to the right, you see these little circles with arrows. They are telling you that at any given point here, that is the direction of our magnetic field at that point, right? So the local magnetic field vector tangent to the field line at any point. Related to that, magnetic field lines do not cross. The reason they do not cross is that that would give us some nonsensical information. That would tell us if we had a field line that crossed that the field pointed in two different directions at the same point. That doesn't make sense, right? So just like electric field lines, magnetic field lines do not cross. So in this lab, we would be using compasses. You might have a compass kicking around somewhere in your house. If you do, take it out and go exploring. So a compass is actually just a small bar magnet with some freedom to rotate. So this little thing that you see in the image to the right-hand side that has a little bit of red paint on one end, that is a small bar magnet. I rotated the body of the compass, the casing underneath it, so that the letter N lined up with that painted um, red side. And so that is telling me that the red dot points north and I would just line up my compass to match that so I know which way is west and east and south. Now I could do that because I'm sitting in my house and I know which way is north, I know which way the sun rises and all that stuff. Um, so compasses are one, really one of those things that you get experience with by playing with. It's hard to explain. Um, those compasses will align with Earth's, Earth's magnetic field as long as there's no other magnets or ferromagnetics around to interfere. So if I'm using this compass in my house and I happen to be near something metallic or near my refrigerator magnets, I'm going to get false readings because that uh, compass is going to be overwhelmed by the magnetic fields or by the attraction to something uh, ferromagnetic uh, over the kind of weak Earth's magnetic field. Um, we're gonna use our compasses to map the magnetic field of a permanent magnet. So this permanent magnet is gonna be overwhelming Earth's magnetic field for us in at least the first two parts of this experiment. Okay, so the first part of the experiment is to draw the magnetic field lines between an attractive dipole. So what we would do is we would take two of these magnets that we have in our lab, one of these small compasses, and we would draw these little dotted lines. So similar to how we map the electric field. So you draw a few dots around the north pole of the magnet and these are already labeled for us so we don't have to do any work to figure out what's what, but we could do that easily with a compass. So you draw some dots around that north pole and then you line your compass up uh, so that one end of your compass needle is pointed at one of those dots, and then you draw another dot uh, where the other end of the compass needle is pointed. And then what you would do is you would draw a little line to connect these dots. So our expected result is shown here on the right-hand side of your screen, where you would have kind of these arcs of attractive um, lines between the north end of one magnet and the south end of the next magnet. And those would be your magnetic field lines that you would have arced like this uh, pretty easily. Part two of the lab then is to look at a repulsive dipole. So just like electric charges, like things repel while opposite things attract. So here in the picture to your left, you have two north ends of a dipole. Um, or a, yeah, of a dipole of a permanent magnet. And what you will see as you map this out is that your field lines repel each other. So you can see that with the iron filings in the image to the right-hand side of your screen, that these lines um, repel each other, right? Because remember, magnetic field lines should not cross. And here in the center, you'll actually have kind of a strange area with no magnetic field. Now the third part of the experiment is to do a quadrupole. So in the experimental procedure, you're actually gonna figure out Earth's uh, magnetic north 
Um, and you're going to use that to try to see um, how the magnetic field of the Earth messes with your map of this single uh, bar magnet. So uh, because I couldn't find a simple image with the magnetic filings of a quadrupole, I started doing this map myself. You can see the result here on the right hand side of your screen. Um, what you would start to see is the magnetic field lines are skewed a little bit by um, that north um, direction not aligning with the north of our bar magnet. Um, the north direction of the magnetic field would, of Earth's magnetic field would start to skew this. Um, to visualize it a little bit better, I actually did an alternative approach to the quadrupole where I used two bar magnets. And you can see the really interesting part is here in between the two magnets. You start to see magnetic field lines that are a little interesting, um, that repel each other. So we have a field line that goes from the north to the south of a bar magnet and from the north to the south of the neighboring magnet, right? Um, so that's a little bit more interesting way to look at the quadrupole with the magnets I had on hand. Now you can try to do some of this experiment, some of this qualitative stuff at home. Um, I would joke that some of these experiments are experiments toddlers do with refrigerator magnets all the time. Um, if you remember maybe when you were a little kid taking two magnets off the refrigerator and trying to stick them together and feeling them repel each other, that would be your north-north or south-south repulsion. And if you flip it over, you'll feel them snap together. That's your north-to-south or south-to-north attraction. Um, and we're visualizing that with the magnetic field lines right now. Now just to point out some typical magnetic field strengths, um, Earth's magnetic field, uh, this, this I borrowed from a different website, um, Earth's magnetic field is about half a gauss. Gausses are not uh, SI units, but they're just a little bit off from, you know, they're a multiple of 10 off from Tesla's, which is the SI unit. So a half a gauss is 50 micro Teslas. Um, Earth's magnetic field is pretty weak, right? So a refrigerator magnet is 100 times as strong. So it's 50 gauss or five milliteslas um, for a refrigerator magnet. Uh, the next thing they have in this list that you can compare to is a junkyard electromagnet. So picture that big thing that's like picking up crushed cars. That's a one Tesla magnet. Um, then you've got MRI scanners or laboratory NM NMR spectrometers, which the chemistry department has in the basement of Franklin. Um, those are much, much stronger magnets. Um, you can also build pulsed field magnets. Um, you'll see there's a non-destructive and a destructive pulsed field magnet. Um, the destructive, basically you've crushed the material that made up the magnet under that magnetic field strength. Um, so yeah, if you're doing your homework and you're getting really big numbers of Teslas for a magnetic field strength, double check your numbers because it's probably not correct. Um, but the magnet I was using for this um, probably on the order of a refrigerator magnet. It wasn't a super strong magnet uh, at all. So when you're writing up your um, lab report for this, uh, just make some observations based on these images I've shared here um, and make a few observations about whether we followed the rules I laid out at the beginning of this for our magnetic fields. Do the density of lines tell us about the strength? Do the lines ever cross? Do they point from north to south? That kind of thing. Um, so thanks for watching. I will be back with another one of these shortly.